All right, so a little while ago, I had mentioned that I wanted to create a um, independent z-axis um, bracket for the Pwn CNC line of dust boots. So this is the uh, V8 dust boot uh, that I got from Pwn CNC, as well as I purchased their set of oops, um, z support brackets. So. These items were purchased from their uh, from Pwn CNC's website uh, under their makers section. Uh, I'll link to it in the files um, section for this for this video and on the printables site. But these will not be included as part of the STLs because these are made by Pwn CNC. I did not recreate these. These are again from their site as they um, send them out. So you can purchase these uh, from them. If you're interested in in doing a similar modification or adding this to your um, should work on a um, queen bee and the ultimate bee, the mounting plate for the Z axis, as far as I understand, is the same. I have the ultimate bee um, is what I've tested with and played with. So if you do have a chance to try it on a queen bee, maybe let me know. Uh, but I think the mounting holes are very similar. Uh, for this, you're going to need a few different screws. Um, Pwn CNC does sell uh, essentially screw packs and maker kits. Uh, I'm in Canada, and the shipping to get them here is pretty expensive. Uh, I would like to buy them because they do have some nice square washers and some things that would make life easier, um, but uh, it just is cost prohibitive to get them here. So what I'm using is a M5 by what is that a 15 um so m4 m5 by 15s 4 m5 by 35s m5 by 40s sorry so 4 m5 by 15 and 4 m5 by 40s is what you'd need. Uh, you then need a set of brackets. So these are the brackets that are going to go on the Z axis. Um, there is obviously it's a mirrored set and there are uh, nuts pushed. You can kind of see them down in there. So there's four M5 nuts pushed down into the cavity on each of these. Okay. Then what you're going to need, um, you need the hardware to put the um, Pwn CNC uh, pieces together. They do indicate what you will need. Um, so there is a series of magnets and some M5 hardware to hold these two brackets together, as well as there is some M3 uh, hardware on here and M2.5, and again, some more magnets on the dust boot. Uh, this de is dependent on the dust boot that you pick. If you go with their V9 series, obviously the hardware is different. Um, if you buy one of their dust boots, this would all be included. Uh, so it depends on how you get there. But from my understanding and, and looking at their solution, once you have the arms mounted to your uh, machine, basically you can use any of their magnetic dust boots um, and, their, and their arm system. Okay. So I'm going to uh, install the brackets and just kind of show you the setup there and then talk about the dust boot a little bit. So uh, let me get that assembled and we'll go from there. So I've got that installed. So uh, if we just come around, you can see now I've got the arm coming down. Um, the bracket just mounts to the Z plate um, on the metal backing here. There's two open screw holes that line up with the silver bolts there, there, and maybe I can get in there down under here. So there's two bolts on each side. And then I kind of came up with my own screws. Again, if you're buying the kit from Pwn CNC, you might be able to use their solution. Uh, but this is an M3, um, M3 bolt 
that is 40 millimeters long. Um, I've put two uh, nuts on it. And basically what the nuts allow it to do is sit inside this channel um, and allow it to move. I could probably add a third, uh, third nut maybe, uh, but those two nuts and a little bit of a washer keep it from coming through the extrusion. It's not the greatest system. Uh, definitely the hardware kit that Bone CNC sells is, is better, and I probably will change that out at some point. Uh, but this allows me to attach the arms. So these are the arms, again, that they sell. That's the channel that is on the arm that goes into this bracket. So screw goes through there into the bracket. And then I've just got an M3 thumb screw on this side uh, to help make adjustments, uh, height adjustments a little bit easier. Um, but again, you could use, I do recommend some sort of thumb screw or something easy. The whole idea of this is that you can adjust the Z height uh, readily, reasonably quickly and easily. Uh, so you definitely want something that's reasonably quick. So I'll put the other arm on here. Tighten that down. Um, and as I said, this is a pretty, <laughs> pretty new version. I've only ran it a couple times on the machine. Um, so if there is feedback, there is updates. Happy to make updates. I will make the files available as well. Uh, so anybody else that wants to tinker and do their own. Um, maybe adjustment or version for the work bee or has a much better idea of what they're doing in CAD than I do, um, then they can take what I've, I've done and run with it. So I'll just get that set here, tighten that up. So then I've got my dust boot and it goes, I've kind of done that ass backwards, sorry. Normally you'd have your spindle out of the way. Okay, so now my dust boot can move up and down, loosen this off, and I can slide this up and down to the height of my stock. I might have to loosen that a little bit more. So if this is my stock, I can now get my dust boot down uh, to the top of my stock. And lock that in place. Yeah, that screw is spinning a little bit. Um, so again, those th my screw setup for this bracket is not ideal. I will come up with maybe a better way to do that. Um, maybe even just a piece of plastic uh, that can sit in there. Anyway, a uh, couple couple options. I got to figure that one out. I will I will noodle on that and come up with maybe a better way to deal with the M3 uh, piece that needs to go in here. Um, but now I can, I don't have my machine powered up, but I will lower my spindle. Okay, so then with your Z lowered, um, now I've got my bit down in here. Uh, this is where the suction is provided. Um, on this model specifically, there is um, this front piece. Now, again, I said this is the version 8 of their dust boot. And what I'm finding, at least with the version 8, and I might have to, I don't know, I don't think we're allowed to take and modify their STLs, um, but here's what's happening on the version 8. I know on the version 9, it's a little bit different but let's take you over here sorry about the hand so you can see what's happening and i had this happen on the other job um so i had to lower you can see how low my spindle is sitting now on the z axis here so i've had to move it down and drop it quite a bit lower basically so that the dust boot will clear the block so if i you know i'll show you if i move this down more so the bit's coming down to the material. The dust boot's not moving, but now you can see that is 
impacting the bottom of the Z. So the cavity or the, the actual dust boot part needs to extend further back. Um, this piece needs to be longer. Now I know on their version 9 boot, um, it's using a lot more acrylic and it's, it goes back quite a ways. So that might be a better option on the work bee. I, I bought this file and printed it, um, but I may have to look at um, switching to, to the other one. But in any case, I will either extend my version. Again, I can't make that available as far as I know. Um, so I might extend the flat version just in, in CAD and push the a vacuum adapter back further so that it clears um, the block of the Z axis. Uh, or I might have to look at just designing a whole new dust boot, but that's going to be a longer project. So I would say if you want to do this um, and you have a four inch dust port, um, you look at the version nine of their dust boot, I think would actually serve the Ultimate B quite well. Um, there's also a few um, dust boots that they have that are front mountable but independent uh, Z and that would allow you to use this as well because again the dust boot's going to come off the front rather than the back. So the other thing to note is because this sticks out, you can see how this is designed, it sticks out a little bit and basically that's because the mounting holes kind of interfere and then you've got the limit switches. So I, I tried it a couple different ways but really pushing it out was the was the best option I can come up with. Um, again, maybe there's somebody that's much better at CAD that can do it differently, uh, but because this has to slide up and down, there has to be nothing interfering with that rail. Um, so you do need to make sure that your limit switches um, are uh, taking that into account because when this comes over to this rail or this comes over to this rail, um, let's see if I can just push this. I found a clamp. There we go. So I need to make sure that my limits are set so that I'm not going to crash the Z axis uh, dust boot into the side rails. So on my machine, I mostly work inside of uh, the grid patterns. So my general working area is inside of that. But if I do want to push the limits of the machine and how I have it set up, this may not fit well. Uh, so there's a few things to keep in mind. It's not all sunshine. It's not all done. I do need to put some more hours and testing and some thought into it. Like I said, I'm already uh, running into an issue with this specific dust boot um, that either I have to extend it or do something a little bit different to make it work better. Um, but I think it's a very viable solution to use some of the Pone CNC uh, dust boots. Like I said, coming off the front would solve a lot of those problems. I am going to look into the V9 and look at what it might take to extend this specific dust boot because I do kind of like the look and, and idea of it uh, to extend that uh, throat back so that it can clear that axis. So that's where I'm at today. Uh, like I said, uh, these files will be made available. Um, I will put up the material and parts that you need, at least for attaching it as I have it, uh, not necessarily all the hardware um, that uh, is used down here because that's on, on Pwn CNC site. Okay, awesome. Thank you, hopefully that's helpful, and hopefully I can get to uh, a new iteration here in not too distant future. Thanks for your time.